My name is Alyssa Macy, and I'm of the Wasco Navajo and Hopi descent, and I'm a citizen of the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs, Oregon. And Central Oregon is a really beautiful place. It is high desert plateau. It is a land of juniper trees and sagebrush, of mountains, of rivers. It's a place that I definitely didn't appreciate when I was young. Well, I felt like coming home that it was a, a place of just exceptional beauty. My upbringing in my own community has had a huge impact on me. Uh, being connected to a place and, and a culture, spending time with elders, spending time with nature, making that connection through cultural teachings was really something that I feel very fortunate to have been given um, that opportunity. My father was a man who was an avid reader. He was a thinker and he raised me at a very young age to talk about and to think about our treaty. And so he was always talking about our treaty. He was talking about justice. It wasn't really until I got into college that I started to think about what that actually meant to me as a, as a native woman, as a tribal member, all of those things. And as I got into my academics, I spent a lot of time researching and writing and talking to tribal leadership about nation building. What does it mean to build a nation? My interest in treaties and my interest in nation building is what took me to the United Nations. It's what took me all over different parts of the world. I worked with an NGO that was focused on indigenous people's rights and elevating primarily the issue of treaty rights to the United Nations. It's the common fight that I saw people engaging in was around lands, territories, and resources and extractive industries and wanting to ensure that the land that they come from, where their creation stories come from, where their people come from, where they get their food from, where they live and die, that that place is a place that will always be there, not just for people that are presently here, but for future people. For me, I spent a lot of time in the last couple of years thinking about what do I value? What are my values? And service is a value. Um, love is a value. Relationships and friendships are a value. Um, the environment and, and Mother Earth and all of the things that she provides to us is something that I value. This is how I ended up here in Washington working for the Washington Environmental Council was as I was exploring various opportunities, I had to look at what I thought would be a place where I could lead with my heart, like where I would feel it every day, that this was something that was real, that I cared about, that I felt like I could maybe add value to, make a difference in the world. This was the place where I landed. It felt right because the organization has been doing such great work over many, many decades to address environmental issues here in the state of Washington. Any work that is being done around salmon habitat and preservation of salmon will impact my people. So I felt like I could come here and work for an organization that was doing good things in the state of Washington and it would still allow me to be connected to my own community of Warm Springs. That was really important to me. I also feel like when I came here, I joined a really exceptional team of people, people that care about what they're doing, people that are experts in their area, people that are really hardworking. And I've learned even more about that as we've been dealing with the, the coronavirus and, and the situation currently that we're dealing with. We find ourselves in a historic time right now. The world is seeing the impact of coronavirus in ways that demonstrate to us the interconnectedness of everything on this planet. We are seeing how homeless people are impacted. We are seeing how the healthcare system is impacted. We are seeing how insecure food systems are to communities here in Seattle and around the world. We are also seeing the impacts to labor in very real ways and a recognition that hasn't been there about the value of everybody within the labor market. What it is doing is it is forcing us to slow down. It is forcing us to slow down and to take the time to lift our heads up 
from the work that we're doing and to see how interrelated everything is. It will not be the same when we come out of this situation. It will never be the same. We could never look at the work that we're doing in a silo. We will always see how this issue is connected to other people, other places, and to plant and animal life, the water. And I think when we come out of this, we will reevaluate the work that we're doing um, and to make sure that as we prioritize our time and energy and our resources, that we continue to do good work to address critical climate issues here in the state of Washington and to continue to be a leader in this space, but that we will continue to adjust our strategies and the way that we do work to take into account a full systems viewpoint. And I also think that when we are able to see the totality of the structures that we work in in very real ways, that the work that we do prioritize will be more impactful. And I think that's how um, I think that this situation, this, this global pandemic that we're dealing with today right now will help us to be better in the future.